I recall you had shared previously your favorite memory of Steve Jobs. I won't try to tell the story on your behalf, but I think with the challenge that you've shared, would love to have you share that story with everyone here today and what the experience was like working with him to bring something truly visionary into the world. And obviously what things have been like after you walked away from Apple uh, in terms of building everything. Sure. So uh, so I met Steve for the first time on that day when he invited me and my two co-founders, Doug Kitlaus and Tom Gruber, over to his house. Um, immediately, I noticed the two things that, for me, define Steve Jobs. And I don't read any of the books. I haven't read any of the books about him. I haven't seen any of the movies about him because I have my own memories, my own impression, and I don't want to taint it. I'm sure there's lots of other true things I just want my experiences to stay authentic to me. But the, the two things that define Steve Jobs for me, number one is he was desperate to achieve success. He was desperate. And my reaction was, my gosh, this guy's a billionaire. He's already reinvented so many fields from computing when he came out with the Mac, you know, and graphical interfaces to movies with Pixar to mobile to music to you know, I'm like, this guy could just chill a little bit. He's, he's incredible. He said he could just like, just relax a little bit. Nothing, no, nothing about that. He did not care what he had achieved before. He was desperate to do great things. And the second part is in um, many times when you meet smart people, and I'm sure like in VC worlds, et cetera, you meet smart people all the time. Many smart people think they know they're the smartest person in the room and they know what they know and they believe what they believe and they're right. Steve was not like that. Because he was desperate to succeed and to win, um, he was always looking to challenge his own assumptions. So that very first day, he asked me a question. He said, Adam, should Apple buy, and he named a company. And I said, no, I don't think so. He's like, what, why, 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 why? We got into a debate or an argument, but there was a lot of passion on both sides. And it was challenging and it was hard, like it was coming right at you. But I defended my position. And the point was, if you had a contrary view, he was gonna push on it because he wanted to get it right. If you couldn't defend your position with data and logic and, and rationality, it would knock you aside. Like, don't, don't waste my time, I've gotta win. But he was always open to hearing another opinion. And this for me is what made him great and to changing his own opinion. And at the end of that conversation, he said, you know what, maybe I'm gonna think about that. I've heard you, I understand what you're saying. We're not going to do it the way you say because a, B, and C, I don't think your concern will be the problem. So we're gonna do it this way. And here's, you know, here's why. And I was always okay with that. I go, you're the boss. I always felt he heard me, he thought about it. And he said, here's why we're going a different, different route. So for me, his absolute desire to make the most of every day going forward and to, to make it great and to be open to changing his opinion, that, that for me is defined Steve Jobs. 